So we had a wonderful, one of our professors in the seminary, we just all loved him. He's an old elderly Benedictine monk, his name was Father Polycarp. He was a holy, holy man, a little bit eccentric, but we are, all the students just loved him. And when we'd have our weekday liturgies, sometimes we had prayers of the faithful, and he would close his eyes and he'd go, Dear Lord, please comfort the afflicted and please afflict the comfortable. <laughs> I remember the first time I, I, I heard that, I just did a, sec, a double take. But of course, uh, he's right. When God comforts us in our times of sorrow, we're receiving a blessing. And when God disturbs us or upsets us, when we're on the wrong path, doing something wrong or not doing something right, that's a blessing as well. Jesus says a prophet's not without honor except in his own place. His place is in our heart. But if we open our heart to him, there's going to be times for sure when he comforts us. But there also will be times when he bothers us, when he upsets us, when he troubles us, when he's trying to get us back on the right road. And those are wonderful times too. Thank God that God loves us enough to do that. And then... As you know, in our baptism, we're baptized into priest, to Christ, priest, prophet, and king. So we are prophets as well, from our baptism on. And there will be times where we have to go into that uncomfortable place with people we love. You know, I love you, but you're not going to Mass. What's wrong? Or I love you, but I think you're on the wrong road. What's happening? And they might get upset with us. They might even have some choice words for us. But you know what? That's real love. Prophet is not without honor, except in his own house. I've asked our wonderful seminarian, Sean, to share some reflections with us today as well. I have a friend by the name of Father David Ryder, he was one of the two tap dancing priests that went viral on YouTube about two, a year ago. So if you've seen that, if you haven't, you should go on YouTube and look it up, tap dancing priests. It's really good. Uh, but Father David Ryder, after this went viral, a lot of Italian news agencies were getting a hold of him. So he kind of became famous in Italy. And he, but he always took these opportunities as evangelizing moments. So he was on the bus one day, and these little Italian grandmothers were like, hey, that's the priest. That's the tap dancing priest. And they said, no, no, it's not. And he's like, yes, it is. So they kind of like scoot over to him uh, and start talking to him. And he said, Sean, if you ever want to make an Italian feel uncomfortable, ask them if they're going to mass. Because they don't. And so he says, he, he does this. And he says, what parish are you going to? Oh, Father, parish. Well, I go to church sometimes. Oh, well, what's stopping you? Oh, well, there's a lot of things going on. I'm busy. I got a lot of things, you know, Father? It's, you know. He's like, well, are you Catholic? Oh, am I Catholic? I'm Italian. Of course I'm Catholic. We're born Catholic. Which is contrary, or uh, I guess you could juxtapose it to the Polish, who they're Catholic because they've suffered. And the suffering came upon them, and they chose Catholicism. They chose Jesus Christ. So you see almost the hardness of hearts among the Italians. Why? Because they're so familiar. You know about Jesus? Oh, of course I know about Jesus. I know about your church. I know about what your church believes. I know what the Catholic Church teaches. But do you, do you know Jesus? I know about Jesus. I know about Jesus. But I want to ask them, do you know Jesus? Just because it's in your blood doesn't mean that you know who he is or what he wants to do with you or how he wants to move you or what he wants to do inside of you. And this is, the, this is really what Jesus is giving to us in the gospel today. He comes to his native place and they push him out. They say, we know who you are. We know what you're about. You're Mary's son. You're a carpenter. 
you're not the Messiah because their idea of Messiah was supposed to be a government king or a political leader or an army guy. You're not the Messiah. You're not going to save Israel. I know who you are. Their hearts were hardened because of a familiarity. And so, when do we push Christ out of our lives? Just as they pushed him out of Israel, when do we push him out of our hearts? Why are our hearts hardened? It happens to all of us. I was just talking to Monsignor yesterday about an experience I had over the weekend, and I said, Monsignor, I, I'm kind of afraid to, to bring this to the Lord because I, I don't want to go there. I have to be vulnerable. I have to open my heart to Jesus and let him into a place that I've, I'd like to put a wall there. And that's the place Monsignor said we have to pray from, that we bring our pain and our suffering, the things that we don't want, we have to bring that to the Lord and expose it. Right? And so these Italians often say, I know about Jesus. And I want to say, do you know Jesus? They say, you can teach me all about you, Jesus, but I'm not going to learn anything new. And I say, I don't want to teach you. I want to bring you to an experience of Jesus Christ. I want to bring you someplace you've never been that no amount of knowledge can learn in your mind what Jesus Christ wants to do with you, in you, for you. He wants to transform you. I don't want to just teach you about Jesus. I want you to know Jesus. Right? You can go to Six Flags here in America, and you can be like, this is going to be great. We're going to have a great day. We're going to have a fun time. We're going to, have, we're going to wake up early. We're going to have a big breakfast. And you go to the park early, and... You're the first ones in line for all the rides. It's a wonderful day. But if you wake up that day and you say, oh man, I got to pay a lot of money today. Oh man, I got to wake up early. I got to feed my kids. They're going to want to get all these different things at, the, at Six Flags. You're going to have a horrible time. What is your mentality? Are you open to letting Jesus Christ know you and you know him? Or are you closing your mind to him? Closing your heart to him? So what is it that prevents us from opening our heart to Christ. What is it? For some of us, it's hurt. Or we feel hurt by God. I made a prayer when I was seven and God didn't answer it. So why should I go to him now? My parents fought. I prayed that they would stop and they didn't. God doesn't care about me. If God is so good, why did he let my family member die? Why does he allow this suffering to go on? You tell me that God wants to work miracles in my life? I don't see it. We're closing our hearts. I, I brought up the Polish people earlier because when the Nazis invaded them, instead of closing their hearts and saying, God, why are you allowing this tragedy to happen? They said, Jesus Christ, we embrace you because you're our only hope. You're our only strength. You're the only thing that we have. Do we have that cry in our hearts? Do we come to Mass just to be, fulfill our Sunday obligation because our parents did it, because our grandparents did it, because it's a family tradition? Or do we come to Mass to say, Jesus Christ, you are my only hope. The suffering in my life, there's nothing else that can take the place of consolation than you. That when you come to me in this Eucharist, you come into my pain, you come into my sorrow, the sorrow that I've built up in my heart over 7, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Jesus, I need you. What is our mentality when we come to Mass? Are we the Israelites? When we come to Mass and say, thanks Jesus, thanks for coming. Or do we say, Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for changing me into who you want me to be. When we accept Jesus, both in faith and word, but also in this Eucharist, and we receive him into us, he starts to melt away the, the ice that we've allowed to cover our hearts. He breaks away the stone and he replaces our heart, the stony heart that we've had, with a heart of flesh. But it's not just any heart of flesh, 
It's his very heart of flesh, the sacred heart. He gives to us his own heart. And this is the greatest gift that we get to receive his heart.